And now, Lifestyles Unlimited presents the Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Over the next hour, we unfold your map to financial freedom. You'll learn how to retire through investing in single family and multifamily real estate. You'll learn how to create cash flow and build wealth so you can have the time and money to live the lifestyle you want. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon. And as always, I'm working on your financial freedom. But last week, I, I wasn't I wasn't doing that. I, I'm, I'm going to be clear with you. I was I was being selfish. I was being absolutely selfish. As a matter of fact, I was so selfish that I took the entire week and I devoted it to me. Yeah, I devoted the entire week to me. OK, not just me. I also devoted it to my wife, Tina. And here's, here's what was going on. I, let me just fill you in on the, the entire picture here. In 2017, I became a member of Lifestyles Unlimited. They're the company that sponsors this radio show. They're a real estate investor, education and mentoring company. They've been around for almost 32 years. We were founded in Houston, Texas by Del Wamsley. He's our founder, our CEO. And he's still engaged with helping us understand the trajectory of the future. Yeah, it's really cool. But one of the neat things that happened to us was that in 2019, Tina and I were sitting down, we were looking at, you know, what we were doing for our investments and what we should tweak and maybe we should modify something else. And, you know, we're kind of going over our five-year plan and we realized that we had achieved a retirement. We did. Now, I'll be the first to tell you that when you become a member of Lifestyles Unlimited, we're going to help you formulate a five-year plan. And that five-year plan is designed to get you to a place of retirement. So imagine our shock when in 2019, Tina and I were looking at our five-year plan, and we're only about two years into this five-year plan, and we realize we've achieved retirement. We did. We had enough passive income coming in from real estate sources that it offset what I needed to earn by working. And that's that magic moment when all of a sudden you regain control of your life again. And that happened to us in 2019. And I'll tell you what, we were like ecstatic. We were ecstatic. And then we started thinking, okay, well, if we're retired, we need to start doing things that retired people do, right? Yeah. So we started thinking about, all right, well, what do we want to do as retired people? And one of the things that we had always wanted to do was we wanted to get out and see the country. Yeah, see the country together as a couple. And then, you know, about the time we were ready to go out and do that, it was around 2020. And you know what happened. Yeah, you know what happened in March of 2020. We went into lockdown and we stayed in lockdown for a very, very, very long time. As a matter of fact, I think you, you still have government agencies out there right now that are that are considering putting us back into a lockdown because of whatever's going on in the medical world of this world. Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy out there. So Tina and I had to put all of our plans on hold because of the pandemic. We did. We were actually planning to get out and go do things. But instead of going out and living this, this new retired life that we had achieved, we wound up doing what everybody else did, which was, you know, sitting in our house and waiting for the pandemic to stop doing what the pandemic does. Well, fast forward two years, we get to 2022, and actually we, we only got to 2021, and we were seeing signs that the comp company, the country was starting to come out of the pandemic. Now, you and I, we saw that depending on where you live, it was it was a different result. I get that. All right. And there's still parts of the country where they want you to wear masks and things like that. Although I will tell you, having come from the Pacific Northwest, the mask mandates, they're not really there. Now, they encourage you to wear a mask. And if you feel it's appropriate for you to wear a mask, you should put one on. But if you don't want to wear one, no one's going to make you wear one. There's no mask police out there. We finally did something that was amazing to us. At Christmas time, I bought my wife 
a cruise. And we had planned this cruise for, well, you know, the month of May, the month of May in 2022. And we finally had the opportunity to go out and experience just fully being retired, 100% being retired, because now we actually had this component that was the lifestyle that was sprinkling in on what we were doing. So this is what I bought Tina. I bought her a seven-day, I think they call it the, the Inland Passage Tour. So basically, we flew to Seattle. We got on a Royal Caribbean ship, a beautiful ship. I think it was one of the biggest ships they had in, in their, their arsenal of ships, right? So we get on this thing. It, it's supposed to hold like 6,000 passengers. There's only like 4,000 passengers on board. So there's, there's a lot of extra space. You're not running into people, which is really neat. And then we start this cruising experience. And Tina and I, for seven days, we, we fell into this magical place on a cruise ship, cruising from Seattle all the way up into the inland passages of Alaska. And it was, it was magnificent. It was, it was wonderful. We finally had that opportunity to, to experience that lifestyle that we actually had earned two years prior. But because of the pandemic, we couldn't, we couldn't take advantage of it. The cruise ships weren't operating two years ago. No, they were all in mothball. As a matter of fact, one of the things I learned on the cruise that, that we went on was the captain told me that the cruise fleet operated with a very super skeleton crew because they can't just park those ships and then like, you know, turn them off and walk away. And then two years later, come back and everything's going to be fine. Now I realize in the rest of the world, the, the rest of the world was melting down around you. Yeah, I, I, I saw it. I saw it. Like the only, the only TV station that they had on the ship was the news stations. Yeah, there, there were like three of them. You, you had your choice between BBC and I think it was MSN and Fox. And then everything else that was on that, that TV was like ship related or I don't know, other types of in, entertainment that I wasn't interested in. But every once in a while, I was just kind of curious as to what was going on in the world. So I'd pop on that TV and I just witnessed the horrors that you experienced last week. Now, I'll tell you, my world was beautiful. I, I mean, I'm watching the results on the TV. I'm, I'm seeing things like there's a, a baby formula shortage, and it's, it's getting critical. Children are actually being hospitalized because of that. All right, that's a problem. It's a huge problem. And then I'm looking at inflation. I'm looking at what you're dealing with inflation. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is this is bad. I hope they don't hit me with a fuel surcharge while I'm on the boat. I mean, that's kind of what was going through my mind. And then and then I was looking at what's going on in the stock market. And I thought, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. For those of you in the stock market, this is about ready to become a very, very challenging time for you. It is, because what has occurred in the stock market is, well, essentially, the stock market giving up all the gains that it had earned all the way back to like August of 2020. Yeah, talk about hitting the reset button. You think about it, August of 2020, and this is what, May of 2022? That's almost two years. Almost two years that that stock market has given up any and all gains that it had earned. And some of you, some of you are relying on that stock market to create the wealth that you plan to utilize in retirement. Yeah, you're on this game plan where you're, you're pushing as much money as you can into your 401k or your IRA or your whatever, whatever you're using as a financial instrument to save your way to retirement, because that's what you're doing. You're saving your way to retirement. You're going to get this big bag of money somewhere in your future life, and you're going to try and live off that big bag of money. And if you do it effectively, it probably won't run out. But the odds are against you. They're totally against you. Yeah, the odds are that money's going to run out, especially when you look at all the inflation information that's been coming out. Oh, my goodness. Inflation. I've been, I've been warning you 
about inflation for literally the last year. I, I've brought it up on this show. I, we've discussed it. We've talked about the fact that real estate is one of those assets that tends to do better than inflation does. What, what does that mean? Okay, so if inflation is going up, I don't know, at 10%, just picking a number out of the air, depending on what news source you look at, 10% is either a real number or it's not a real number. It's, it's an example, okay? If inflation's going up 10% and my real estate is going up 30%, am I ahead or am I behind? And the short answer is, well, I'm ahead. Clearly, 30 is better than 10. 30 outpaces 10. As a result of that, I'm 20% ahead. Yeah, so I'm doing better than inflation. But here's, here's the ugly thing going on in the economy. Inflation's out of control. It, it is literally out of control. You got the Fed adjusting interest rates. You have the, the Mortgage Bankers Association just going, ah, you know what? We just need to jack all the interest rates up two full points. We got, we got to slow this economy down because we got to get it under control. Yeah, that's what they're trying to do. And they're trying to utilize interest rates to get this economy under control. But that's what's going on to my customers. You heard me correctly. That's what's going on to my customers. See, I'm in the business of providing clean, functional workforce housing, and I provide it to a demographic group that really desires it. They do. Trust me. The people that I rent my properties to are great Americans, or they're working on becoming great Americans. Yeah, you heard me correctly. These, these are people that I have found to enter into business relationships with who I have found to be economically sound and trustworthy and worthy of being in business with me. And what I provide them is, is a class of housing that not too many other people offer them at the price point. Yeah. Yeah, that was just a big, fancy way of me saying, my stuff looks better than everybody else's stuff. And my price point for rent is commensurate with all those other price points that are out there for rent. It's just my stuff looks better. So people want to live in my stuff. They do. My stuff looks good. It does. That middle class, though, they're getting the raw end of the deal because prices are going up all around them. Every day that they wake up, they turn on the news and they hear the news about record high fuel. Yeah, gasoline, record highs. Okay. So here's the problem. Their wages, the wages are not going up. No, their wages are not going up. Unless, unless they were minimum wage workers, in which case all, all these governments artificially pushed minimum wage up to what? $15 an hour in, in many places, and, and they're, they're trying to federalize that, make $15 an hour the new minimum wage. Okay, I could spend an entire show talking about how minimum wage is not a living wage, no matter how much you jump that wage up. It's, it's not. It's, it's an entry-level wage. It's, it's always been, it always should have been, an entry level wage and people trying to live on an entry level wage are going to find it difficult. All right. So let me get back to my, my residents. My residents are not experiencing pay increases commensurate with what's going on in the economy. They're not. But the one thing that is helping them in this current situation is the fact that they signed a lease. They signed a lease with me. And we agreed to a price point. At the time we signed that lease, we agreed to a price point, which means I don't adjust that price point at all, not at all, during the time that that lease is in effect. If my residents agreed to pay $1,000 per month for rent, that's what they're paying for the entire year, $1,000 per month. I don't care if the value of that unit could get me 
$1,300 a month? Because I have a lease. I can't mess with it. This is good for my residents. There is a dream killer here somewhere today. You're going to run into somebody who's going to tell you this stuff doesn't work. Like Vinette said, it's a scam. This is probably a multi-level marketing program. Somebody is going to tell you it doesn't work because you're the wrong race, the wrong age, the wrong sex, the wrong sexual preference, the something or other. And this is all set up so rich people can be successful and all you poor people can't. And if you believe that, they've won. But if you don't, you win. Don't believe the dream killers. Start winning today with the Lifestyles Unlimited free workshop. Get the knowledge you need to replace your income in two to five years and then find out how to take action. Register for the free online workshop at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. All right, so I have a lease coming due. I do. It, it terminates at the end of June. So I'm, I'm within my 45-day window where I will contact my resident and we'll have a discussion as to whether or not she chooses to stay in the property. If she chooses to leave, that's totally fine. We'll schedule a walkout or walk through, I should say, walk out. We're not, we're not, we're not going on strike. No, that was, that was a bad choice of words. We'll schedule a walk through. We'll make sure that the property is in the same condition as when she moved in. And if everything's fine, I'll send her back her deposit and she can go ahead and move about her life. Totally fine. But let's say she decides to stay in my property. All right. This is where it gets interesting. Because here's what's going on. That particular property I leased to my resident almost a year ago for the rate of $1,325 per month. Now, at the time that we executed a one-year lease almost a year ago, I made a decision not to increase the rent on that property. I did. I made a decision not to increase the rent, even though rental comp comps were telling me that I could get thirteen seventy five for that property, I made a decision to leave it alone. And I'll tell you what, it was a good decision. It was a very good decision. Now, some of you are thinking, wait a minute, Al, hold on, time out, Al. You could have raised the rent fifty dollars per month. That would have been pure, pure profit for you. Yeah, it, it would have been because essentially the, the property is operating at that $1,325 price point. It's still producing cash flows for me. And even though, even though the insurance costs went up and the property taxes went up, I was still operating that property at a profit and I was okay with it. And back then, a year ago, I made the decision not to increase the rent on my resident because I didn't feel the need to have to do that. That resident, by the way, takes immaculate care of my property. You heard me correctly. Immaculate care of my property. We have a great relationship. Anything goes wrong in that property, anything, I don't care how minute she thinks it might be, she lets me know. So that way I get my hands and head around the problem, which is going to save me a lot of money. Yeah, you heard me correctly. Because problems that occur in your rental properties that are not addressed immediately become bigger problems. And bigger problems equate to bigger expenses. All right, let me get back to what's going on with this, this property. The lease is coming due. And this particular resident indicated to me that she would really love to continue living in this property. And I don't, I don't have a problem with her living in the property. But one of the things that I have to take into consideration is this little, little fact that the property has already achieved my targets for what I'm supposed to do with the property. 
Okay, you're probably going, all right, what are you talking about? Al? All right, let me explain myself. When I bought this property about a year and a half ago, when, when did we buy this thing? I want to say November 2020. Yeah, something like that. We, we, yeah, we were buying and selling real estate in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah, we were making a lot of money in the middle of the pandemic. You can do this too, but let me get back to the property. So this particular property, I, I want to sell it. I do. It's achieved my price point for what I wanted this property to do. My equities have, have arrived where I wanted them to be. They arrived there much sooner than I anticipated. And part of that has to do with all this inflation stuff that I've been talking about. Okay. Now, my resident wants to buy the property. The lease is coming due. I mean, it's, it's going to run out in the next, I don't know, what time is it? In the next five weeks or so at the end of June. So I've already been in communication with my resident, and we are talking about giving her an exclusive right to buy that property. Yeah, an exclusive right. In other words, I will sell that property to her. I will give her the first opportunity to buy that property. I'm not, I'm not going to create a bidding war like I've done with my other properties. I'm not trying to get an extra twenty five, thirty, forty five, fifty thousand dollars out of the property based on the fact that I know that I can I can force demand in the marketplace. No. I'm going to give her the opportunity to buy that property. Now, I'm going to sell it to her at whatever the fair market value is. I'm not going to charge her more than what fair market value of the property is. And she's not going to compete with anybody to purchase that property. That, to me, is her reward for being an outstanding business contact. Yeah, she's a business contact. Yeah, she's not my BFF. I'm not, I don't go to her grandkids' recitals at the school down the street. No, no, we're doing none of that stuff. I made a business decision to sell this property to her, to give her an opportunity to buy something that she's never been able to buy in her life. Now, if she can't consummate the sale, all bets are off. Yeah, if she can't qualify to purchase the property and get a loan on the property. I know she doesn't have all cash to pay for the property. If she can't do that, then I have to decide what I'm going to do with the property. Now, I may, I may decide to hold this property. I may decide to keep holding it. And why would I do that? Even though I, I've hit my, my strike price as far as a sale goes. Because the one thing that I have in this particular property is that I have an outstanding relationship with somebody that enjoys living in that property. And I'm willing to do whatever it takes to help her keep that property as her own. If she can't qualify for the loan, what I will most likely do is I will just renew the lease out and I will sell the property, but I will sell the property to another investor. I will. I'm, I'm not going to force her out of this house. I'm not going to say, okay, you've got five weeks left. Uh, I don't care to renew the lease. Start packing your stuff. You got to go. No, I'm not going to do that to her. Yeah, this, this is the human side of real estate investing. Yeah, this is totally the human side because I'm making business decisions based on a win-win concept. I'm not making business decisions based purely <laughs> i'm not making business decisions based purely on my own profit motive yeah you 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 didn't know that did you yeah this is this is to me what real estate investing is all about it's making sound decisions that impact favorably all the stakeholders involved in the transaction it's pretty neat, huh? Yeah, it totally blows away every concept you had of a landlord. Yeah, landlords are supposed to be nasty people. They don't shower. They they look disheveled. They 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 chain smoke. They you know they wear wife beater t shirts. You know what I'm talking about? The the typical. Okay, remember Three's Company? All right, I know some of you 
some of you folks my age, you remember Three's Company, right? Do you remember Mr. Roper? He was the landlord. Okay, everybody thinks that's what a landlord is, Mr. Roper. Yeah, he's just, just a nasty, gnarly, snarly guy, and he doesn't care about anything, right? Okay, that ain't true. Yeah, landlords are not all like Mr. Roper. Now, there are some that are like that. Trust me, there are some that are like that. That's that's how we get this image portrayed about us as landlords. I like to find out what, what people do. I mean, what are you doing for a living? What do you do for investing? What do you do for retirement? I ask people questions like that. I, it's not just on this radio show that I ask people probing questions. I ask them probing questions on a cruise ship, too. And I will tell you what, I, I ran into some very, very interesting people. Now, one person I met indicated to me that, that she was a real estate investor. And I thought, oh, this is great. I'm, I'm actually going to sit down with somebody, have a drink with them, and we're going to talk real estate investing. And this will be a good experience for me, hopefully be a good experience for her. So I asked her, well, what, what are you invested in? She says, well, we're invested in Texas. And I went, oh, this is awesome because, well, I live in Texas too, right? Okay. So she said, yeah, we've got a property that's in a little town called New Braunfels. All right, I know exactly where New Braunfels is. It's northeast of San Antonio on the way to Austin. It's, it's a growing, thriving community. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of Lifestyles Unlimited members make a lot of money in New Braunfels, but I, I digress. So I was asking her about this, this investment that she has. And I said, what's the, what is the asset? What is it? And she says, well, it's a, it's a single family house. And I went, oh, this is awesome. So, okay. In my mind, she's, she's renting out a single family house. And she tells me that the value of the property is about six hundred thousand dollars right now in the current marketplace, and and my my first inclination to her was to say, I, I know it didn't start there. Where, where where was it when you bought it? And she said, Well, we bought it about four years ago, and we paid half that for it. And I thought, Okay, so now you've got a property that you paid three hundred thousand dollars for. It's now worth six hundred thousand dollars. So I'm thinking, Wow, she's got crazy equity in this property, right? So I said, all right, how much equity do you have? And she said, well, um, maybe around $400,000. And I just went, okay, all right. I, I'm, I'm seeing the pattern here. I know what's going on. She bought an investment property and it's probably cash flowing for her. And she got caught up in all this crazy real estate appreciation that's going on. And this property just went up in value over the last couple of years, she's sitting on a ton of equity. And the first thing that's hitting my mind is that's a bunch of dead equity that's not making her any money. So my next question to her was, how much cash flow is this property producing? And then the then the floor fell out of the, the boat. Yeah, it did. She said, well, it doesn't produce any cash flow. And I went, what? It's, it's a rental property, right? She said, yeah, it's a rental property. I said, well, are you, what's going on with the property? You like doing another rehab on it? Why, why is it not producing cash flow? Well, because we're, we're living in it. And I went, what? You're, you're living in an investment property? How, how does that work? Okay, long story short, she's not a real estate investor. She's not. She's somebody that bought a house to live in. And she's living in that house. She's consuming that house. Now, that house went up in value, totally went up in value. But here's the problem she has. If she truly wants to invest in real estate, that real estate needs to have a cash component to it. In other words, it needs to pay her an income stream. So living in that property is not paying her any income stream. Now, some would argue and say, well, it's, it's money that she's not paying out. Well, yeah, it is money she's paying out because she is paying most likely a mortgage, she's paying property taxes, she's paying insurance, so she's paying out money. And okay, in fairness, it's probably a fixed amount. And with the fact that prices are going up everywhere else, with the exception of the insurance and the property taxes, chances are that mortgage is not going to go up. So yeah, that would be a fixed amount. But it's not an investment property, because she's living in it. Yeah, she's consuming it. Now, one of the things she could do is she could find a lender that could loan her money on that particular property. 
but she would need to know how to effectively utilize that money, and she would need to take that money and go buy assets with that money that produce income. And that makes it viable for her to put more leverage on the property that she's actually living in. The other option is just sell the thing. Just sell it. She lived in it for two of the last five years. IRS code says you're not going to pay any capital gains tax on it. Just take the money and run. So maybe she ought to just take the money and run. Uh, But there's a problem with that. Because remember, she's living in the property. So if she sells the property, where's she going to live? She's going to have to go out and find another place to live. Ah, that's the crazy thing going on in the marketplace, right? Okay, so person number one, she's a beautiful lady from Texas, came off as a real estate investor. As I probed a little bit longer, I realized she's not a real estate investor. And, and I didn't pick on her for it. I did not. I just merely explained to her the, the fact that there is a better way. And we had a beautiful conversation from then on. I I actually gave her a couple of ideas on what she should do. As a matter of fact, the number one idea I gave her was just become a member of Lifestyles Unlimited so we can teach you how to do this correctly and you can get yourself retired in the next five years. Now, I met another young lady on the boat. And this lady, born and raised in San Francisco, California. Yeah, born and raised in San Francisco, California. I think she was in her mid-30s. And she went to San Francisco State University, a a very good school. She works in tech. She works in tech and she works for, I think she said she works for Google. I think she mentioned Google or she had work. It doesn't matter who she works for. Okay. So so let me frame the picture here. She lives in San Francisco. She's in mid thirties. She's not married. Okay. She's on a cruise. As I probe a little bit diff- longer to, to try and find out what's going on in this, this person's life, I, I start asking questions about what does it cost to live in San Francisco? And, you know, I found out that her rent is $3,200 a month for a one bedroom apartment in San Francisco. That's, that's a lot of money, $3,200. I also found out that she's making about well, probably in the neighborhood of 120 to 150 a year because she's working in tech. Because one of the things she told me was that she had a lot of friends that left California and came out to Texas specifically because those tech jobs were moving away from the Bay Area. They were moving into Austin, Texas, because, well, it's a lot cheaper to operate your business in Texas than it is in California. It's just the way it is. And the other thing that this company was doing was – If you took a reassignment from California to Texas, they didn't Mickey Mouse around with your wages. If you were making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year in in California, you were making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year in Texas. And the big trade off is that in Texas, your money goes so much further. So I asked her, I said, well, why why is it you didn't you didn't take that that opportunity to to jump away from the Bay Area to a different part of the country where financially it could have been more advantageous for you. You know what her answer was? The Pacific Ocean. Yeah, that was her answer, the Pacific Ocean. She grew up around the Pacific Ocean. That's her life. That's her life style. That's the life she wants to live. That's the life she's been living for the past 30 some odd years. She has no desire to change that. Okay, this is good. Because what that did for us was it gave us a framework to work from. It gave us the opportunity to have a conversation about how one little rent house that she could buy in a place called Texas, where she would never have to actually step foot into, that one rental property could produce $400 a month in cash flow for her. Now, that $400 a month in cash flow, well, that's not going to pay her rent in San Francisco, right? Because I told you it was, what, $3,200? Okay, she's, she's going to be like, what, eight houses to pay her rent in San Francisco. But did, did you just hear what I just told you? She could get it done. She could get it done. She could get to eight houses in Texas, and she could essentially live free in San Francisco. Oh, isn't this cool? And then... She could buy more houses, or maybe, maybe she could trade the houses in and start buying apartment communities. One asset after another 
I showed her how she could get out of the rat race that she's in, trading time for money, because the other thing that she told me was the money that she makes working for tech, that, that pays for her life living in San Francisco. But it did not pay for her cruise. In order for her to afford a cruise, she has a second job. She's a bartender. She bartends on the weekends. Her life is seven days a week. Seven days a week, trading time for money. When we finished our conversation, she had an idea of how she could trade all that in for retirement in the next five years. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.